When your skin is red, when everything stings, if it's been really dry, you've been sick and you've blown your nose a lot, these are the products you can use to get your skin buried the best chance of recovering. So you can go back to using all the fun products. Hi, it's Michelle of Lab Muffin Beauty Science, chemistry PhD, cosmetic chemist, and I try a lot of products so I overdo it on my skin sometimes, mess up my skin barrier and make it really irritated. But that also means I have a lot of experience helping my skin recover. And that's what we're talking about today. I also have my friend Hannah English sharing her best products. She's a pharmaceutical scientist and skincare content creator. She also has rosacea, which is a really confusing skin condition. A lot of people don't even know that they have it. So we'll be talking a bit about that too. Let's start with active ingredients for irritated skin. I used to think that you couldn't use any active ingredients if your skin was really irritated because so many of the really evidence-based active ingredients like retinoids, exfoliants, and vitamin C, they're really irritating. It was actually you who made me realize this, which is why I got you in this video. What is your approach to using actives on irritated skin? I try to think about it like, does this ingredient give back to my skin or does it take from it? What are some of your favorites for calming down irritated skin and supporting your skin barrier? Panthenol, glycerin, and hyaluronic acid. So those are hydrating. Panthenol's a little bit soothing as well. Niacinamide, everyone's fave, but not too much. Like 5%, not 10 or 20. And then there's barrier support. So we have ceramides, cholesterol, or you might see phytosphingosine. So that's a lipid you find in the outer layer of your skin and it helps to give back to your skin those lipids that it's maybe missing. Then we have soothing ingredients. So my faves are definitely oat and also centella, so sica, metacalcicide, and copper peptide. So moving on to specific products. I don't know if I told you this, but your serum actually made me realize how there were lots of actives for irritated skin because I used your serum and it was lovely on my skin and then I looked at the ingredients list and there was so much stuff in there. So side note, I did not invite Hannah onto this video because she's my friend and I wanted to plug her serum. We are going to talk about other products, but this was like a revelation to me. So the serum is water-based and most of the time water-based serums really sting when my skin barrier is compromised and this did not, it just felt so lovely. So my mind was blown. I feel like the oat is doing a lot of the lifting there. My skin was stressed out while we were working on it, so it was good for me to test, but what I wanted was something that would feel calming on contact. I definitely did feel like there was a gap that was not much you could get, especially in Australia, that would hydrate, calm, and support your barrier. That didn't feel like thick and balmy. I really love how lightweight it is and how well it layers and like just the fact that there's nothing like this on the market. I've been using this a few times a week even when my skin isn't that irritated because it just fits into my routine so nicely. What are your other favorite products for when your skin's irritated? I really like the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Cheek Masks. You put it on your face and it just feels calm, it's hydrated, it's the best even after treatments, you know when your skin feels really hot. So I personally just don't really enjoy sheet masks because I don't like the feeling of them sliding down my face. So I love the Cicaplast Balm B5, which is getting reformulated to the B5+. I picked that one up in Europe and so far it seems to be pretty similar on my skin, maybe a little bit lighter, but I have heard different things from other people. A lot of people have told me that they really like the Cicaplast serum as well, but I haven't tried that enough to really say yet. There are a lot of other Centella products that are formulated for this sort of skin recovery phase as well from brands like Bioderma and there's quite a few in K-Beauty too. I quite like Neod's copper peptide, but the lipid, which is a sort of gel, it's great because it's sort of a one and done PM routine. Beauty Bay make this moisturizer that's oat. It's called Thirst Class. It's kind of a bit richer, so I would use it in winter. Yeah, I think oat is just really underrated. I used to make this DIY oat mask back in the day that was just ground up oatmeal mixed with water and I would just slap it on my skin. Oat has a lot of hydrating actives and evinanthromides, which are really soothing. If you fancy, the Cosmetics 27 Balm 27, which is sort of like a healing oil balm, really beautiful. It has essential oils, but they're sort of chamomile, calendula, those calming ones, not the hectic lavender or anything like that. Laneige Cream Skin, beautiful. Uh, doesn't have many ingredients. Mm. Mm. I really love that one too. It's really lightweight and less ingredients just cuts down that chance of skin reactions. Along the same lines with less ingredients but a bit heavier, there's also Vaseline and Aquaphor, which is mostly just petroleum jelly, 
and they're water-free, so there's like a lot less chance of stinging. There's also CeraVe healing ointment and the QV sting-free ointment, which is like the Australian version of that, and they both have ceramides in them too. I also really like using face oils when I have that compromised skin barrier because of the lack of water. It just doesn't tend to sting as much. The Paula's Choice Advanced Replenishing Toner, I feel like, reminds me of Laneige Cream Skin, only it's packed with antioxidants as well, so it can almost be your AM serum if you want a bunch of antioxidants. I quite like my LED mask as well. So I have one that's red and near infrared. I find when I use it regularly, my skin is just more resilient and can tolerate more things. I get a little bit uh, tired in the evening, so you just put it on and then you've done skincare. And it's one less layer on your face. Mm. I mentioned before that you have to avoid retinoids, exfoliants, and vitamin C, but there are gentler versions of those, so what is your policy on using these when your skin's irritated? It really depends for me on how irritated my skin is, but I do have some gentler versions of my actives. The La Roche-Posay C10 is an example. That one has 10% vitamin C, but also their neurosensine peptide and a bit of salicylic acid. So I have literally never had an issue with that product mm -hmm. and I have issues with vitamin mm -hmm. C. And if I wanted a retinoid, the Kiehl's microdose, it's enough to have an effect but it's not enough to cause any issues. So that's also a perfect beginner retinoid in general. And it has ceramides to replenish your skin as it works. I also really like using derivatives of vitamin C and A when my skin's irritated because while there is less evidence for them working, they are a lot gentler, which I guess could be because they're not working as well, but it is like a nice fallback option. My favorite less irritating derivatives for vitamin C are ascorbyl glucoside, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, and THGA or ATIP, which are the same thing. And for vitamin A, I like Renactive Retinoid. For gentle chemical exfoliation, I like using polyhydroxy acid, although I do also sometimes use a very small amount of salicylic acid since it can be soothing, but you do have to be pretty careful because a lot of the formulas are quite harsh. So one question I get asked a lot is, how long do you generally have to wait for your barrier to fix itself before you can go back to your usual products? I am getting pretty good at repairing mine and recognizing the signs before I truly obliterate it. So a week or two, recently I had a facial where uh, it was an enzyme exfoliant and it was like a bit scrubby and I felt a bit tingly around the mouth. I thought it would be fine. It wasn't fine the next few days it was tingly. Mm. And so like, I just cut the actives for about two weeks. Previous times it's taken me three months. That is so long. Yeah, I think it is just a lot easier to not mess up your skin barrier in the first place. The longest my skin has taken is probably a week or two, but it depends a lot on the type of irritation. So with perioral dermatitis, Usually that is maybe a day or two. If my nose is peeling off after a cold, then that will usually be over a week. Now with cleansers, which ones do you like for irritated skin? I like to use fragrance-free cleansers and it's because if your barrier is a little bit compromised, then things get in mm -hmm. further and so they wouldn't normally irritate you, but they can. I like Aven Extremely Gentle Cleanser. I like Biologique Recherche Lay You. That is the one that's for oily skin, but it's a cream. Mm. And I like a really soft washcloth, so like that really flammable, fluffy polyester. Mm. I also like fragrance-free cleansers where my skin's irritated. Some of my favorites are from Geek and Gorgeous, Hadalabo, and Bondi Sands. All of those don't really strip skin, and like you said, they have moisturizing ingredients that give back to the skin. I also really like using Bioderma Micellar Water with soft, reusable cotton rounds. The Bioderma was specifically designed and tested for sensitive skin, and reusable cotton rounds are just really soft. Now, we are Australian, so of course we have to talk about sun protection. What is your approach when your skin's irritated? There are a couple of sunscreens I know not to use because I can feel a little bit spicy on the cheeks if my skin is irritated. But generally, I will look for one that is formulated for sensitive skin. I really like those European pharmacy brands mm. that cater to this type of skin. Yeah, I think there is this sort of assumption that you have to use zinc oxide if your skin's irritated, but... Sometimes that's not the best option and newer sunscreen filters can be really non-irritating. If you go into like a French pharmacy, you'll see that all of their sensitive skin sunscreens are actually all chemical sunscreens. They have those newer filters. 
Some people actually find zinc oxide more irritating because it is drying and it's quite irritating when you're rubbing it in because it's so thick and sticky and also just trying to get it off with cleanser at the end. On top of that, they're not always truly free from chemical sunscreens. I've talked about this before, but there are these SPF boosters that are in a lot of mineral sunscreens and they have almost identical properties to a lot of properly approved chemical sunscreens. I've actually talked to quite a few people now who have told me that they react to some mineral sunscreens and not others, and then they checked and they saw that the ones that they do react to have butyl octosalicylate. What other tips and tricks do you have for irritated skin? I think a lot of people don't know that your skin, it exfoliates itself, right? It's called desquamation, and it does that better when it is adequately hydrated. So I would always try to hydrate my skin before I try to exfoliate it, if it's flaking or something like that, and you might find that the flakes take care of themselves that way. I also really like doing several layers of one toner. Putting several layers of one product on is better than putting four or five different products, right? Less opportunity to upset your skin, freak it out. I also find that with flaky skin, if I have to get rid of them before putting on makeup, then I will wet my skin and use a peeling gel very, very carefully and just buff in tiny circles. And that seems to do the least damage. But that is like a really emergency sort of thing. I wouldn't recommend doing that regularly when your skin is compromised because the hydration technique is just so much safer. You also gave me some really good tips for perioral dermatitis, which is a newer issue for me. It's a red rash that comes up around your mouth and near the sides of your nose, and it's been coming up more because of mask wearing. The extra humidity can lead to an impaired barrier and imbalanced microbes, and that can contribute to perioral dermatitis. So I've had to change a few things when it flares up, like adding a cleanser in the morning, which I don't usually do. When my skin is happy, then extra cleansing tends to mess it up more and dehydrate my skin. But when that perioral dermatitis is flaring, then my skin's already messed up, so cleansing actually takes it back towards happy. Do you have any other tips? If you think it might be perioral dermatitis, never put steroids on it. That's a Dr. Caraism. It's my beloved dermatologist. Perioral dermatitis, it's like imbalanced microbiome, but also it can happen from steroid withdrawal. Mm because the steroids put your immune system to sleep a little bit. Your immune system was there sort of keeping the microbiome in check. Speaking of microbiome, I found that I sometimes get very superficial folliculitis on my body when my skin gets irritated. So like after exercising and I'm sweaty and my clothes have been rubbing in my armpits and in like my crutchal region. And it's usually worse when I'm a bit run down from stress and lack of sleep. Basically, this is when bacteria infect your hair follicles and you get red bumps with pus that look like shallow inflamed pimples. For these, I like to use a benzoyl peroxide cleanser. Most of these are meant for the face, but dermatologists have been recommending it for body folliculitis too, and it's been working really well for me. I use it right after I exercise and also when I'm having a flare and just also, not marinating in sweaty clothes helps a lot. But if it's really deep and painful and not going away, then definitely see a doctor because you might need antibiotics or something, or it could be just not folliculitis. Now, rosacea, I get asked about this a lot, and it's a bit of a confusing condition that not a lot of people talk about. So what is rosacea? Rosacea is a chronic inflammatory skin condition. It's basically my dermatologist explained it to me as it's the blood vessels that are inflamed, mm. not the pores like you would have in acne. You'll see visible blood vessels, so those little red ones, they're called telangiectasias. Uh, redness, flushing, so you'll see a symmetrical pattern of mm. redness. So mine comes and goes. You might get sort of a pimple-like bump, but it won't be in the T-zone. It will be around the cheeks mm. and the nose in this pattern. So it's like W zone, not hmm. T zone. It gets confused a lot with acne and it tends to show up from your late 20s onwards. So how did you first suspect that you had rosacea? I was at an event and Dr. Dennis was there and I said, you know what? I'm always like flushing pink and red through here, sometimes through my cheeks. What's going on? Is that something I can treat? He's like, well, that's rosacea. And I was like, See ya. I want to know. Why should you actually look into managing rosacea? The thing about rosacea is that it progresses. So you'll start with just the pink and the flushing and maybe some visible blood vessels around the nose. You can get them in your cheeks too. And then you'll start to get lesions. And you can also have it get into your eyes. And then it can progress to thickened skin. 
and swelling. In terms of treating rosacea, there are over-the-counter options like azelaic acid. You should also see a dermatologist who is experienced with treating rosacea and they'll have other options available. How else do you manage rosacea? Keeping on top of your skin barrier and keeping that in check, in place, really supporting it is number one, and avoiding triggers. So you'll notice when you start to flush from certain things. The sun is a big one. My skin hates the indoor heating, hates it. Alcohol, some foods even. Spicy food is a big one, especially for like pale people that only eat med meat and vegetables. Some medicines even do it. Your skincare or makeup could do it. I feel like in the skincare community, we talk so much about acne, but nowhere near as much about rosacea. So if any of this is sounding familiar, then you might want to read up a bit on rosacea and consider getting it checked out. I'll put some more resources in the caption and keep in mind that if you have darker skin, the redness will be harder to see. I hope you enjoyed this nerdy chat. If you did, like the video to train the YouTube algorithm to give you more content like this. Also, share any tips you have and leave questions for Hannah in the comments. You can follow Hannah here. She's also written a great book and you can see how much I'm getting out of it from all of my tabs. I also have an ebook on skincare and I hope this video helps your skin be less grumpy at you.